Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from Our Space. I found out that my wife is a prostitute. My ex and I met in college. She was the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen. She always had a crowd of guys following her around. I had some classes with her over the four years, but I never pursued her because, well, all the other guys. One day after class, she asked if I would study with her, and the rest is history. So we married, starting our careers in the same industry, different companies, a male-dominated industry. I found immediate success while she struggled. She changed jobs in the first year. She continued to struggle. In the third year, she became pregnant with her first son. She worked through the pregnancy. A few weeks after giving birth, in a routine physical, her doctor asked to do a biopsy of her cervix. The results came back as precancerous cells were found. The doctor advised if we wanted more children to do it as quickly as possible as this will progress and a hysterectomy will be needed eventually. So when she was up to it, she became pregnant again. She gave birth again to a boy within a year of each other. Afterward, more tests were done and different doctors advised us to do the procedure now as we should not wait. With two babies, still infants, she had her procedure done. She was heartbroken that she was done having children as we wanted a large family. She poured herself into being a great mother, and she was, is. She became a stay-at-home mom. She took care of everything at home. Meanwhile, my career was moving along. I was offered a position with another company with a large salary bump. Life is good. When the boys went off to school, she volunteered at school and was a fixture there. I should mention that we had close friends we went to school with, A and B. We saw each other often. They started their family about the same time we did. They have one son. The families went on vacations together, dinner, outings. We were best of friends. After the son was born, A, the mother, went back to work and was very successful. B had a good job also until about 2001 where his job was eliminated. He struggled to find work in his field and as the economy back then really affected his field. So the decision was he would be a stay-at-home dad while looking for work where we lived as they did not want to move. The X and B did things together with the kids. When the kids were all in school, they still hung out. You can now guess they had an affair. The story I know is long, but not over. After about a year of this, hot sex in the AM, B asked X if she and I had ever talked about a threesome. It was all fantasy talk with us, as we were still having a great, if not slowing down sexual relationship. B had a friend he wanted to bring into the bedroom with them. The X agreed. The day came and this guy, C, came over to B's house. He took his suit off, as X and B got warmed up. So they had their threesome. Afterward, the guy told them that he usually had to pay for sex. So he left a couple hundred dollar bills and asked X if he could have a one-on-one -on -one with the X. She told him she needed to think about that and B would get back to him. Eventually, C recommended someone else and a business was born. Eventually, B was reemployed and had to leave X on her own. She used a different cell phone. She rented out a storage unit and made it her closet slash office. She used the money to buy outfits her clientele requested. She even bought a car. She did not want her minivan spotted at a hotel. The guys had to pay for a room at a nice hotel. She kept the car at the storage unit. Everything was in cash. She never brought the money into our lives that I know of, though we would send the kids to different day camps during the summer. She claimed she tightened up her budget to pay for it. She only worked during school hours. She always picked the boys up at school. On a few rare occasions, B would pick them up and keep them until she got home. Our home life never suffered. I admit I was working a ton and moving up the ladder. The weekends were our family time. Sex was generally on the weekends. I thought because of my work life this worked best. Most nights we would cuddle on the couch watching TV. Almost done. 2016 comes along. We have one son in college and the other a senior in high school. I get a call from B. X is in the hospital. He was vague but said she is hurt bad. I rush to the hospital. My wife is hooked up to a bunch of machines. They have already cleaned her up and taken her for x-rays. She has a broken jaw, broken nose, fractured orbital bone, possible concussion. She will make it, but will be a long road ahead. A police officer was finishing up and left. I, of course, want to know what happened. She was crying, talking gibberish through her sobs and pain meds. A nurse said I should let her rest. They were moving her to a room soon. She handed me a bag with her clothes. I looked in and asked if these were hers because she never wears heels and the dress was unfamiliar. The nurse said this is what they brought from the hotel room, so they pushed me out of the room. I called my sons to let them know. Later that night when the fog of the drugs was wearing off, I got some of the story. 
she drifted off again. I had my youngest son sit in with her and I called B. Why did he call me? How did he know before me? What's going on? So B came clean about what my wife was up to, leaving out the affair and his involvement. I was devastated. We eventually get her home after surgery on her jaw. The nose would wait. She convalesced at home. As she got stronger, I got the whole story. I called A and told her of the affair and B as a pimp. She threw B out. As she got on her feet, I told her we were done. I asked her to move out. She moved in with B. I got the divorce rolling. I'm sitting here five years divorced. I still love her. It is as if she had died. The grief is unbearable. My boys know what she did. I have not spoken to her since she left. Update. I did not update as there really was not anything to say until last night. I received a call from my oldest son, R, who was out of town for the holiday weekend. A friend called him to tell him his brother, S, had been in a motorcycle accident. He was with him, but did not see the accident as he was riding ahead. I rushed to the hospital ER. They were cleaning S and were sending him for x-rays. I told him to have a seat and the doctor would be out. A few minutes later, as I had my head leaning back and my eyes closed, I heard my name. I look up and my ex is standing in the doorway. She asked for news. I said I was waiting. She asked if she could sit with me. I invited her to a seat near me. I have not seen her in five years since the divorce happened. I did not know what to expect. I assumed that she would be disfigured from her beating. She was not, although her face was not as flawless as I remember. The one thing I did see was that her eyes no longer sparkled. This was a feature I never got enough of. Even with a mask on, her eyes did not look the same. Funny, what you notice. When she smiled, her face used to just light up. I imagine she just has an RBF now. Anyway, while waiting, we had a nervous catching up talk. She mentioned she liked the landscaping I did and how the plants now matured really look nice. This tells me she has been by the house where I have no idea where she lives and my sons were told never to mention her name to me. During and after the divorce, I tried to purge any remembrance of her. I replaced the bushes in the yard as it was something she had planned and planted. I did not mention that the inside of the house was redone also. I even ripped out a wall. I had a construction dumpster in the driveway for many months. She asked how I was doing. I don't know why, but I was honest that I had put myself at a standstill by working too much. However, I recently went to a therapist and joined a gym. I also have taken up bike riding. She volunteered that she was no longer. I just left it there unsaid. She stayed with B for a couple of months. She also was seeing a counselor who encouraged her to take some college courses in her degree field. That took a couple of years. She is now employed full time. She said she has dated minimally leaving the statement open for me to answer. I figured the boys were keeping her up to date on me, so I had nothing to add. The doctor appeared and discussed the extent of the injuries. Most serious was to his foot, an ankle pinned under the bike when it went down. They had scheduled him for surgery today. Everything is good, he just needs to heal and rehab. So he will be in until at least tomorrow, depending on his head injury, slight concussion. I offered my house to stay as I have the room and can work from home. We will finalize that today, although that means his mother will want to visit. That will be a healing process for me. Let's get a couple reactions from the community before we move on. Pataruzu12 says, take your time, check your feelings, baby steps. It's okay to be cordial. It doesn't mean more than you are a gentleman and you may need help to take care of your son. Recent Sir 7972 says, I'm amazed that you kept calm. I wouldn't even have talked to her, only about your children's situation. I don't think she regrets, but okay, are you? Why not try dating again? No Carpenter 8359 says, Keep with your therapy and work out. You don't want to go back with her. You have two children with your ex, so you will have occasional interaction with her, but don't get pulled into anything with her. Therapy will hopefully help you find a way to move on. Good luck. Stay safe and stay strong. All right, on to the next story. But before we move on, I'd love to hear what you think of the first story by leaving a comment down below. My soon-to-be ex-wife passed me an STD from her affair partner. It's not easy finding someone's cell number these days, but I got lucky. A friend of a friend was nice enough to help me. She took it well, but was surprised. She packed all of his stuff and put it outside and changed the locks. With any luck, 
My soon-to-be ex-wife of 25 years will be moving in with the human stain affair partner lawyer real soon. I'm praying for this so hard. Now for the messed up part. You know how a lot of people on here say, get an STD test? Well, it turns out my affair partner has an STD. Now I'm worried that I got it too. It's the kind that stays with you forever. The gift that keeps on giving. Hopefully, God will spare me that horrible STD. I only had sex with her one time after her affair started, but that's all it takes. To be clear, I never touched the soon-to-be ex-wife after D-Day, but before I knew she was cheating, we had sex at least once. It's the cold sore kind, but in STD form. I'm an idiot and way too good of a person. I called my soon-to-be ex-wife and told her that her new lover has an STD. Of course, she doesn't believe me. What an idiot. Edit. I'm referring to herpes. I tried to post this three times before and it was deleted by the mod bots. I thought it was because I used the word herpes, but I was probably cussing or something. Update 1. Looking back three days ago, I was doing okay. I had to print out screenshots of my soon-to-be ex-wife texts with her affair partner. It's about 300 pics and it took me two days. I'm now back to square one and I haven't slept for two nights. I'm just going to mention one part of my horrific story. My soon-to-be ex-wife of 25 years had to have major neck surgery. I'm talking about removing her vertebrae and replacing them with a metal cage. Major neck surgery that I paid for and was her caregiver for almost two years. She was bedridden for 12 months. When she healed from the surgery, she cheated with this lawyer a-hole. In the text, they talk about how he choked her. I can't begin to explain how much that hurts me. Update 2. My soon-to-be ex-wife of 25 years ran away. Her affair partner broke up with her and she got fired. She started talking to some guy from Facebook nonstop for four days. She said, I'll be back in a few days, and drove two states away to live with him. This complete stranger is her new roommate. She also ghosted her only friend. Her friend had no idea about this new affair partner. I'm not going to lie, I'm worried about her. She's making very bad choices right now. I'm completely shocked about ghosting her only friend. At least I can finally start to heal. It feels like the day one of quitting cigarettes or something. This is brutal. Update 3. I just got my test results and I have antibodies for herpes. They couldn't specify. And hepatitis B. I've never even had a cold sore. Ever. The only person I've touched in 27 years is my fabulous wife. She doesn't even believe me. I texted her a photo of my new medicine that I have to take every day of my effing life from now on. She has me muted or something. I'm really struggling to understand how I deserve this crap. She told me to call her lawyer and hung up before I could tell her about hepatitis B. I guess I need to call her lawyer and tell him to call her. I don't know. Edit to clarify, I'm going to call my lawyer and let him contact her lawyer. Update 4. I've been alone now for 19 days. I'm enjoying having the house to myself, but I keep getting triggered and it makes me sad. I keep hearing this shine down song, 45. Whatever happened to the young man's heart? It got swallowed by pain as he slowly fell apart. I'm swimming through the ashes of my former life. No real reason for that, except the way things have changed. My soon-to-be ex-wife found out that I got my tax return and called me begging for money. My first comment was, oh, did you sign the divorce papers? Of course not. She is living with a new monkey branch of air partner, and she has the audacity to call me and ask him for money. She's lost her mind. Update five. First STD test was false positive. After my first STD test was positive for herpes and hepatitis B, I went to a separate specialist. The infectious disease doctor said that my test results for herpes are the same as 90% of the population and quit taking medicine. The liver doctor ran two separate tests and both were negative for hepatitis A, B, or C. I'm obviously very happy about these results. I'm not sure what happened with the first test, but that's the results my lawyer knows about. My divorce is still months away. The first video court is at the beginning of November. For reference, I'm at nine and a half weeks from D-Day. She is living with monkey branch affair partner number two and still refuses to sign the divorce papers. I'm much better off now that she ran away, but I'm always sad instead of mad. Anyway, I love y'all. I'll keep on trying, might as well. Okay, time for some community reactions. D-Save says, well, that is good news. A non-cooperative divorce is only going to make it less favorable to her. Armor Teague 227 says, A very heavy this. Let her continue to stir the pot while OP dines on her upcoming tears as appetizers for a very hearty main course of court. 
St. Bosco 56 says, Yeah, if she doesn't sign the papers, a judge will declare you divorced. Is she stubborn or really stupid? Cosborn 40 says, Right, the divorce will go forward even if she ignores everything. The worst thing you can possibly do is ignore it. I thought about STDs from Kindly Idea 2333. I'm not sure if this will help you. If you can get a copy of the first STD test with the false positive for herpes and hep B, you could share it with the affair partner number two. Don't give him a copy, but let him know. I'm pretty sure he will drop her like a rock at that point. Wild Grapefruit 9177 has our last thought. OP, I just read all of your previous posts that I could find on this matter. How did this all begin? I don't know if you posted and deleted, but dang, it seems like your wife was suddenly possessed by a space alien. Invasion of the body snatchers, but much, much worse. The earliest post of yours I saw was about a month or so ago, but it didn't say how this whole thing got started. Please don't feel obliged to answer if it is too painful to remember. Oh, the OP responds. It's a long story, but I'll try to give a TLDR. She was living in constant pain because of pinched nerves in her neck. After the surgery and rehab, she started an emotional affair. I filed for divorce, and she begged me to withdraw and work on her marriage. Five months later, I found out she was having sex with the new guy. She said that I was ignoring her, but that's a complete lie. Especially after the first affair, I was doing everything I could to save the marriage. I'm assuming that her neck surgery and not being in constant pain made her feel entitled to be a complete narcissist. She still has not told me why she threw away her life. Why she threw...